Allen is with us now for his first TV interview since agreeing to look into what happened for the city. Allen, thank you so much. Do you know what went wrong or have any working theories so far? No. The, the bottom line is that you, in a situation like this, there, there is an, ex, an elaborate number, an extensive number of things that you have to consider. And it takes a very long time to get enough information to do all that. And we have just started that process. I didn't get here until Friday of last week. And, uh, you know, I have all kinds of ideas, but they're just ideas. And you have to, what we do is we come up with a kind of a schematic list in our brain of all the different possibilities we know of. And then as we're able to evaluate it further, we eliminate some of those ideas. And sometimes you then add more ideas as you come along. And the more analysis you do and investigation you do, you get it down to, you know, to a few things. Um, when things like a, a bomb or a plane hit a building, you know what the trigger was. In this situation, the, the, we're going to find, I believe, lots of things that were not necessarily perfect but didn't cause the building to collapse. What we're looking for is the trigger that caused the building to collapse and then see how the things that might not have been perfect can, can help contribute to that collapse. Alan, it's my understanding that you've been able to examine the, the portions of the towers that are still standing from the inside and that you've walked the pile of rubble from the outside. Can you give us an idea of what you did see? Well, first of all, I didn't walk the pile of rubble from the outside. I walked around the pile of rubble from the outside because I'm not going to interfere with these incredible rescue guys that are trying to do the work they're doing. Um, so when I went into the two existing buildings uh, with other folks, we um, essentially walked through the garages only, which are the only exposed and visible conditions of the structure of the building, because above that, you have the finishes, you know, the floors and the ceilings and the walls and things, and you can't see any structure. In order to see structure above, you have to tear things out, like the finishes and the floors, to see it. So in walking around the garage, uh, which I've walked through many garages before, I was able to look at the exposed and visible structure. Um, and, and it, you know, the, the buildings, um, as almost every garage I've ever looked at, has cracks. Concrete is made to crack, and it cracks. And the idea is kind of the magnitude of the size of the crack. And then what happens to the crack? Uh, a lot of times we put monitors on cracks to see if they're getting wider or longer. Uh, the, the, if, uh, if the crack goes all the way through the structure and water gets to it, the water then runs through it. Um, sometimes that can cause reinforcing steel. Um, certainly the older reinforcing steel in the you know, 40 and 50 years ago to begin to rust. Um, if, if the crack doesn't go all the way through, the water can just lay in there and cause the reinforcing steel to rust. When reinforcing steel rusts, it expands, and therefore you can get some rusted reinforcing steel that kind of pushes the concrete out, which makes the crack bigger. Up north, you also worry about freeze-thaw because when sure. water freezes, it expands, but, but that but, is not... Yeah, not as much in Miami, but we, we've seen so many accounts in these letters and these reports of the pool deck being designed improperly, according to an engineer, such that the water didn't run out, run off. Then the subsequent notification that the, the, it had degraded, and then the subsequent notification that the rebar had corroded and needed immediate repair. Do those things come together to you as a possibility, a strong one even, of, it, of if, if not the beginning of the end of this building, at least a significant problem that should have been addressed? Well, it, you know, it depends on the, the, the sloping in the water not running off the top just means if water gets through it, which it, when it always will, it'll lay there. It won't drain off. Uh, I've seen many, many, many buildings where that's the case. Uh, the issue is waterproofing only has a certain useful life, depending on the kind of waterproofing, and it reaches a point where it needs to be replaced. And that's why you sometimes, as I think in the North Building, they took up all their planters and took up all the waterproofing and replaced all their waterproofing. The, um, the, the issue is that when you have cracks, depending on the size, uh, the, the cracks alone generally are not a major cause of a problem. The reinforcing steel 
when you look at rusted reinforcing steel, it, it'll look like a lot of rust, but rust is an expansive material on steel. So you have to wire brush the steel, you get the rust off and you see how much good metal is left. So, you know, they, they all will be some of the things that possibly could have contributed to the collapse in some form or another, but, but you have to find the trigger also of what actually precipitated the collapse. Sometimes, in fact, quite often, when a building falls, you don't get to see it. In this case, those in your business have the luxury of the video of the, of the building coming down. And as horrifying as it is, we at least know what went first. Does the way the structure fell, the pancaking, and the part that went down first give you anything? Well, first of all, I don't believe that we know what went first. Mm. It's a two-dimensional video, and you don't see the third dimension. So right. we know we know a, a, th a thing that happened first in the video, and then a second thing that happened first in the video. Uh, the bottom line is that the first one came down, called the first one. It might have been the second one. Mm. It came down for some reason, and uh, the bottom line is it can happen the kind of pancaking that is called that you can see can happen because something happens down low or it could be because something is the top like at the world trade center where the top a top layer slab was knocked down it landed on the one below that pushed that one down and then you kept adding more and more and the more you add the more air ahead of it and the more weight you have and it can, can pancakes all the way down the once the that middle portion had fallen down then the portion to its north that sat there for a few seconds, it, it, it no longer was connected to anything. And therefore, it, it, I always say buildings talk to you if you listen to them. Um, it, it did not hold itself up. So it tried to, to figure it out for a few seconds. And when it couldn't figure it out, it gave it up and it mm -hmm. fell down. Somewhere. Alan, before we go, based on, based on your years and years of experience and what you know so far, are you confident that the families of these victims will get the information they so desperately need, and that is what happened here, so we can potentially at least prevent it from happening again? Uh, the answer to your question is that I feel very comfortable that we'll be able to figure out uh, maybe not the, an individual cause, but uh, two or three things that contributed and or caused this failure it just takes a lot of investigation, a lot of materials testing, and a lot of design analysis to do that. Alan Kilsheimer, all the best as you, as you work to find out what did happen here, and thank you so much for your service. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.